Sorry about that. I'm really, really excited for tonight. I really like what we have put together. Obviously, I don't like it because it's like abusive polygamist, but I like it in terms of it's interesting. I just scratched the shit out of my brand new desk. There's a tape measure on it. What are you even doing in here? Is my mic right? I'll get it off with spit. Spit's not working. Shocker. It's going to have to be a magic eraser job. Let me get the TikTok live going. How are we feeling? How are we living? How are we laughing? I was going to make a drink before this, but then I was already late night enough time. So I chose my water. Water. Is the iPad dead? God. The whores persist, but so do I. Okay. You can charge, I guess. I guess they're going to be late. So. Hmm, good. It's turning on. I wouldn't say really. No, I'm just kidding. I really never use this iPad that often. Mainly use it for this to work out sometimes at school. Um, is my mic correct? Hopefully we're doing. Have we done a stream on the Mormons? Not really, no. We have not. And this is this is not gonna be like a all inclusive deep dive. We're gonna talk about a lot. It's gonna be a deep dive, but like there's so much to talk about in Mormonism, we're not gonna go through every little detail. You know what I'm saying? And then there's like the mainstream LDS Mormons, who are slightly less horrific, and then there's the FLDS. Today we're talking about the FLDS. Can I just say, I've been getting the worst headaches recently, and it's, like, really not... One more thing I wanted to ask you about is... God, stop. Um, <clears throat> it's really, like, messing with my, my vibes. I'm not into it. I grew up surrounded by Mormons thinking it was normal. I was not Mormon. It's so interesting to learn about them as an adult. I just got an ad with Paris Hilton right before this, and that feels correct. The underwear is what did it for me. Right. Like, so there's so much about Mormonism we could talk about that maybe we will talk about, but we're not going to talk about at this exact moment in time. Also, speaking of things we could talk about and will talk about, new graphic just dropped. We have the lovely little disclaimer about how this is not my job. Um, but right above that, I made you all a cute little gorgeous Google form to suggest topics because this is what I realized was happening. So I, a lot of times I ask people to suggest topics on my Instagram stories because you can do the little question thing. But a lot of times, if y'all are here, I'm sorry. I mean, this is all the peace and love in the world. I feel like people who don't come to stream suggest topics and they're things that like are just not really our vibe. So I was like, why has my dumb ass been asking the Instagram community for Twitch ideas? Because I feel like, I, I don't know, it's just like different vibes of social media. So I was like, why don't I just use a literal Google form? That'll work. And it's also in my link tree if you want to just do it there. I finally remember to join stream on time. Thank you, Olivia B. Charming. We love that. So true. Those of us here aren't on IG. Exactly. We have done Oprah. We have done Oprah. It was so hard to be unbiased. Um, but yes, we have done Miss Oprah Winfrey. Thanks for the Google form idea. I do what I can. I do what I can. I'm listening while I'm stuck in traffic. This is going to be a good listening one because especially at the beginning. So I was really, so let me just tell you. <laughs> Me and my fucking one brain cell. Absolutely fighting for our life. So I was going to do Buddy Blastro the Cake Boss this week, but then I was trying to make the slides and I just like wasn't, I wasn't like scratching that itch. Like some of it was cool, but a lot of it, like I couldn't find the pictures that I wanted and I was just like not scratching the itch. I'll probably do him later because him saying, you can't arrest me, I'm the Cake Boss is fucking hilarious. But it just like wasn't scratching the itch and I was like, what can I do? And someone on TikTok tagged me in a video where it was like someone talking about a polygamist house they found on Zillow. I looked for the tag. I cannot find it anywhere. If that was you, I wanted to give you credit. I'm sorry, I couldn't find it. I scrolled and scrolled and scrolled and I couldn't find it. And then I searched like polygamist house on Zillow thinking I would find that video. Couldn't find the one someone tagged me in, which makes me think maybe they deleted it or something. But I found a fuck ton of other ones. And I was like, oh my God, this is what we need to be doing. So I wanted to give credit to TikTok for this idea in kind of like a roundabout way of me digging. So I was like, we should look at Zillow of like polygamist houses. And then I was like, you know what? We should talk about like the property ownership and the money aspect. So this is kind of like a merge of like our long deep dives with our Zillow. And so what I was thinking is I was like, I want to do more stuff like this where it's like we get lore in the first half and then we're just kind of like in a silly goofy mood in the second half. So 
I just want to tell you that's what came together. And I feel like this is going to be really good and I'm really excited about it. <clears throat> Have you heard of the Kingston clan? They're worse than the FLDS. It's ringing a bell. Oh my God, Megan Aflame resubscribed 24 months in a row. That's a long time. We've been together for two years. Oh my God, I can't believe some of you have, we've been doing this for two years. Sorry, that just like really threw me off my rocker. I feel like I'm like a new streamer, but it's been two years. Wow. And it really is ups and downs, y'all. It really is. My first stream was like one of my best performing streams. That was that one and the Sister Wives one. But the Sister Wives one was because like that's when it came up. They were getting divorced. The so Sister Wives was just going viral in general. So I was like hopping on that train. But anywho back to the FLDS love a half and half setup right that's what I was thinking so I just wanted to tell you that you can suggest whatever the hell you want but I just wanted to tell you like if you have something kind of like mushy and creative like that I'm into it um so before we get to judging their houses I want to do like some lore and some news so let me actually X out of some of my gazillion tabs. So shout out to Wikipedia. I love Wikipedia. Wikipedia is literally like the wind beneath my wings of my Twitch channel is Wikipedia. Um, and I also, can I just say, I love my new desk. I should have gotten a new desk like months ago. I was just like torturing myself. I don't know why. It's probably because I'm a woman. So I have internalized misogyny and didn't think I deserved a good desk. But the new desk is giving. I'm going to buy a second one, I think, for my classroom because it's literally, it's like sturdy. It has storage. It's the perfect height. It's the perfect size. I like being at a counter height and I like being able to sit crisscross applesauce. That's what I want. And then I like to have a large work area. So let's talk about the fundamentalist church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Fundamentalist. Anytime I hear the word fundamentalist in relation to anything, I'm like, interesting. Interesting. Let's, let's unpack that. Why do you have to be a fundamentalist? How dare you email me LinkedIn? How dare you? Oh my God, why can I play the sound from my computer? It literally, I meant to just put it on Do Not Disturb, but I opened the sound thing where it has like the output. It's like, do you want to put this on your Roku in the bedroom? It's also hilarious. The TV that's in here says bedroom just because I never changed it from my old place. Um, D and D, the traditional part of getting every stream, me forgetting to put on D and D. The hair is giving. Thank you. It was in French braids all weekend, so that's why it's like giving Cheetah Girl right now, and I'm cutting it tomorrow. I'm so excited. And every time I say I'm cutting my hair, I've literally tried to get started like six times, and I'm still just yapping. Every time I say I'm cutting my hair, everyone's like, "Don't cut your hair," and I'm like, "No, I'm just getting a haircut. Like I'm not, like I'm not cutting my hair." Like my coworkers today, because I have to, I had to reschedule my appointment because I forgot we had a meeting and I was just bitching about that. And they're like, "Don't cut your hair," and I was like, "No, I'm gonna cut like that much off. Like it's gonna be okay." Like I think I don't know. Whenever I say I think it's because I have long hair. Whenever I mention getting a haircut, everyone just assumes that I'm like going for the chop, and I will never do that. One time in college, I cut it to like here and it looked so cute when I straightened it. But when I didn't straighten it, it was like huge and frizzy and terrible. So I will never be doing that again. So anyway, we're actually going to get started this time. Hold me accountable. I'm holding you accountable and you're holding me accountable. The Fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. First issue with this religion, too long. Name is too long. Got to think of a better name. Too long of a name. Name's too long. It's not catchy. I don't like it. Name is too long. <laughs> so they are not to be confused with the Mormon Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And these people practice polygamy. It has variously been defined as a cult, a sect, or a new religious movement. So they trace their claim back to Brigham Young, who was the pres president of the, like, the other Mormon church, the LDS church, um, once visited Short Creek and said, this will someday be the head and not the tail of the church. This will be the gra granaries, granary, literally where they store grain the granaries of saints this land will produce an abundant sufficient wheat to feed the people this is so boring and i'm not religious so i feel like i can say this this is not old enough to me i feel like i'm gonna get banned for hate speech against mormons again but like 1904 come on come on we had railroads like you can't make a new religion it's 1904. It's too late. You missed it. 
You missed it. Brigham Young is wild. It is too new. Like, you gotta... It's gotta be old. It's gotta be old. That's the rule. There's a comedian that said this about Mormonism. I can't remember. I think it might have been Bill Maher. Someone said that, and I literally think it's so true. Like, it's literally just too new. I'm sorry. Like, I... I have no basis for that. I have no reason that, that I don't, I don't even have like a, at this point it's old enough. Like I have no rule, but that's just too new. I don't know. It's too new. I don't like it. Um, <clears throat> so where was I? Some of this is kind of boring about like the origins of the church, but basically these people are like polygamist and the, the like main Mormon church excommunicated the people that wouldn't renounce polygamy. This is the important part right here. In 1935, the LDS church excommunicated the Mormon residents of Short Creek, who were like in that little fucking spot, who refused to sign an oath renouncing polygamy. Following this, John Barlow. Lisa Barlow? Stop. But she converted. Lisa Barlow's on Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, for those who don't know. Um, led those in Short Creek who were dedicated to preserving the practice of plural marriage. Consequently, Mormon fundamentalists that didn't follow John Barlow separated, leading to the creation of multiple Mormon fundamentalist organizations outside of Short's Creek. This includes the Apo Apo Apostolic United Brethren and the Kingston Group. So someone here mentioned the Kingston Group earlier. So that's why... Like, there's polygamist Mormons, and the main LDS church doesn't fuck with any of them. And then I think some of them fuck with each other. I'm not really sure about, like, the inter-fundamentalist Mormon politics of the current day and age. I'm not up to speed on that as of late. But there's, like, a couple different sects, and they're all a little bit different. But their main thing is that they're Mormon, and they like polygamy, and they, they are not going to be stifled. For you to be, like... For the Mormon church to look at you and be like, that's fucked up. Like, come on. Come on. Like, for the Mormons to be like, you're excommunicated. Like, if, if even they're recognizing, like, yo, this polygamy stuff, y'all are getting weird with that. They're literally the Mormon church. Like, they're known for their weirdness. Again, if you're here tonight and you're a polygamist, I meant to say Mormon either, if you're here tonight and you're a polygamist or a Mormon, just know, like, prayers out. You're in my heart. Like, no tea, no shade, no judgment. But judgment to the religion, but just not to you individually. I'm sure we could get along. Great. <laughs> They kind of fuck with each other, but not really. Different groups broke off due to theological and leadership fights. Okay, so this is what I'm thinking. This is pure speculation. I feel like they don't fuck with each other, but they kind of have to fuck with each other because who else are you going to be friends with? You know what I mean? Like they need other people to like hang out with and work with and do business with and stuff like that. So I feel like it's kind of like, you know that I don't fuck with you for X, Y, and Z reasons, but we can be friends, you know? Because oh, I was really going to try hard not to bring up Sister Wives tonight, which was like a terrible plan. Um, but like on Sister Wives, they showed them like hanging out with people that were polygamist, but like part of a different sect. And they were like, oh, but we're all polygamists. So, like what's, we have this common ground. So I feel like that's what it is, is it's kind of like they're both excluded or they're all excluded. So they have a little bit of camaraderie, but they know they have differences. <clears throat> yes. Sister Wives is a part of the AUB group. Mm -hmm. I thought they only renounced polygamy because the feds said they had to. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they did. That's what I mean. This is not going to be like the best, most detailed explanation of Mormonism. It's more about what they're up to today. But that is true that the federal government was like, cut that shit out. And the big Mormon church was like, yes, we will. And these people were like, over my dead body. <clears throat> Mormons are not polygamist. How you speak about things you understand. This is why I love the Twitch chat so much more than the TikTok chat. Because I feel like I literally just said that. Like, am I wrong? Did I just say that? <laughs> Maybe I'm crazy. Let's gaslight me live on cam right now. <laughs> um, Judy, or Jody, thank you for subscribing. Current LDS prophet is married to multiple women. Interesting. Very interesting. See, I knew y'all would have lore as well. Gen X Riot, thank you for subscribing. We're really on the subscription chain tonight. I'm really loving that for us. So anyway... Let's talk more about the polygamist. This is what I wanted to talk about with their property ownership. Let me scroll down. So you can see like a lot of shit has happened to them. We'll talk about some of this. Um, where is it? Proper. 
property. I can't ever type. There we go. So, so they do placement marriage, which is basically like arranged marriage in their faith, I guess. But this is what I want to talk about with the property ownership. So the land and houses that were formerly occupied by the FLDS church on the Utah, Arizona border are owned by the United Effort Plan. So let's talk about the United Effort Plan. So we're kind of doing like live research. This is the UEB Trust. It's a charitable organization that is a subsidiary of the FLDS church. Charitable organization, no taxes. People not listening, now it really feels like we're live in your class. That's so true. Um, so they have this like charity within them. So they're not paying taxes on any of this money. It was founded under the leadership of John Barlow. Any relation to Lisa Barlow? Guess we'll never know. Um, and the church viewed this united order as a means of living the traditional Latter-day Saint doctrine of the law of consecration. This involved donating land, homes, and businesses into a single trust with church leaders controlling and being able to distribute and seize property to and from church members. So it's like, because we're a community! Everyone just put the deed to your house under me and all you can trust me. It'll be great. And we won't have to pay taxes. People signed up for that shit. People hate paying taxes. Um, so in 2005, the UEB was seized by the state of Utah following a lawsuit by the attorney general. At the time, it was worth a hundred million dollars. And keep in mind, they're in the middle of fucking nowhere. So a hundred million dollars is like a lot in New York, but in like, Colorado City and Hilldale, Utah, that's like a billion dollars. Like you're Jeff Bezos out there. You know what I mean? Like a hundred million is a lot everywhere, but out there, man. Um, State control of the UEP ended in 2019 and the trust was reformed into a religiously neutral entity. Oh, believe it when I see it. Um, benefiting the original donors and their heirs, including those who had left the FLDS church. So I guess so they gave it back to the people that originally put in. So that is who like all their property is under. So the church has like crazy control of all of these houses and all of this land. Um, so that was just kind of what we just read. But that is the little like lore behind their property that I wanted to tell you. And then I also wanted to get into some financial stuff. Hopefully these don't paywall me. That would be really lame. This is from September 20th, 2017. <clears throat> and the um, FLDS people got in like a lot of trouble for child sexual abuse. We're not going to get too deep into that tonight. We're going to talk more about like the property aspect of this but it will come up a couple times so just like big trigger warning on that when they're referencing like the big case like that's what they're talking about um so federal prosecutors and like I like to warn people if we're going to get graphic, we are not going to get detailed graphic, none of it. We're not really going to scratch it. It's just going to come up in relation to what we're talking about. So federal prosecutors say they will ask a judge to send polygamist cult leader Lyle Jeffs to prison for five years and make him repay the U.S. government $1 million for fraudulently obtaining food stamps funds. This is another way that they kind of like fuck over financially. So the leader in this FLDS church pleaded guilty to several counts of food stamp fraud and failure to here in court. He was a federal fugitive for more than a year after using olive oil to slip out of an ankle monitoring bracelet. Our country is a circus and we are the clowns. Our country is a circus and we literally are the clowns. Uh, feds isn't, isn't care about adult polygamy, but you can't marry multiple children. Exactly. They rarely ever go after adult polygamists, but it was the underage bride stuff that they got in trouble for because that's super illegal and terrible. So that's gonna happen um at least use coconut oil so he has to pay that one million dollars and the federal indictment alleged that him and 10 other members of his racist polygamist sect yeah i can't imagine these people being like part of the black lives matter movement i just don't see that um they illegally used federal food stamp cards to convert food stamp purchases to cash that went into the church's coffers and the main group in this same area so a lot of the houses we're going to look at are in this area um, is comprised of Hilldale, Utah, and Colorado City, Arizona. The case made a significant impact on the U.S. government and also upon the community. Um, so, yeah, they were committing food stamp fraud. And so this is, they kind of get into more of, like, Warren Jeffs and the 
life sentence. And this guy is Warren Jeff's brother, so they're really similar, it appears. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I keep coughing. But the fraud there is very common, and another way that they do that is because they are not... In their eyes, they're legally married because they're married within the church. But in the U.S. government's eyes, they never signed a marriage license because, like, a lot of the people are underage and it's, like, super fucking illegal. Um, so these people, like, from a government legal perspective, it's single moms with a lot of kids. So they get more, like, government benefits because that's how that works. And so instead of these moms actually getting the food for their children, they have to, like, give the food stamps to the church, it seems like, and the church fucking, like, converts them to cash. Like, a lot of people trade food stamps for money, so it'll be like, oh, I have $200 in food stamps. You give me $100 cash for this. And it's, like, win-win because now, like, I have cash and you have extra grocery money, whatever. I would never do that. I've never had access to food stamps to commit fraud. I'm just saying that's how it works. And to be clear, I really don't care. Like, <laughs> when I find out about people committing food stamp fraud, I'm like, all right, whatever, man. Because, like, when you look at, like, the military, I didn't it come out that the military literally burned, like, tens of thousands of dollars of, like, the fucking VR headsets or something? I read that somewhere that they were, like, burning equipment out in the desert in the Middle East because they couldn't take it with them. So, like, that's why I'm, like, I really don't care. Like, if you're committing food stamps fraud and, like, cheating the government out of $40, I do not care. I don't care. I really don't care at all. So, to be clear, I don't give a shit that they shouldn't have been getting food stamps. I give a shit that they weren't buying food for the kids and that the food stamps were just going to the church. That's fucking bullshit. Um, so, here's some more stuff about the news. Hopefully this lets me in. On one of my, on my laptop it didn't, but I think it might on here. Hell yeah. How three brothers from Utah, from a Utah polygamist sect for years ran what prosecutors say is a tax fraud scheme. <clears throat> this is again, Hilldale, the all in this kind of area. Um, ben Thomas's home sat in an intersection in Hilldale. That meant that Thomas said he was told he and his wife could file two sets of tax returns. One set of returns could be filed from an address on the East West Street and another from the North South Street. That sounded like a scheme I did not want any part of, Thomas said in a recent interview. Yet according to court records, the three brothers behind the pitch to Thomas sought $2.6 million in fraudulent tax refunds for themselves over four years, and they were charged in April and federal federal court with one count of conspiracy and two counts of making false claims against the government. They have pled not guilty. That is the most terrifying thing I've seen in my entire life. Jump scare on that. Let's just marinate in that for a second. Let's think about that. Let's talk about that. OMG, can't believe I'm tardy to this one. Utah resident and FLDS residue all over this state. High school bully yearbook photo. Wait, this year? Yeah, when is this from? This is from 2017 as well. So around the same time as the food stamp thing, my guess is they did an investigation and found multiple things going on. Like a lot of times when one agency is investigating something, they feed information to other agencies. So it's common for like a lot of charges for different things to happen around the same time. He looks fun. He looks like an emoji. Oh, can I reread it? Basically... They were filing taxes from, like, two different addresses, and they were fraudulently getting tax refunds. So, like, they were getting double tax refunds is what I think is going on. What the big takeaway is, they were committing fraud and getting huge tax returns based on an address mix-up is what it appears to be the case. It's not better. The other one is not better. It really is not. Okay. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Um, much of the money likely went to the polygamous church. Um, the defendants belong to says half brother Ted Barlow. So that's the other thing about this religion being new as hell. It was literally founded in 1904. The religion was founded by like these people's grandparents. So I feel like that's not that many steps removed. I wonder if their numbers are getting bigger or smaller. Let me look up like a graph of the Mormon population over time because they do be recruiting especially internationally, a lot going on there. Let me, but LDS specifically. I don't think LDS recruits internationally, do they? I'm sure the Mormon population in whole is going up, but I wonder about the FLDS specifically. But 
We have a graph of water usage at the FLDS compound, but we don't have the fucking graph of just how many there are. This is ridiculous. They have a lot of kids, but I don't think people are willingly joining. Yeah, that's why I'm wondering. And then also a lot of kids leave. And I know they kick a lot of the teenage boys out. Like, apparently, if you're a teenage girl and you want to leave, it's like you're going to have to, like, flee in the night underground. They're not letting you out. But if you're a teenage boy and you, like, sneeze too loud, they're like, you're done. You're done. Because think about the numbers of polygamy. You need to have more women than men. And that's not how biology works. So generally speaking, it's 50-50. When you have kids, 50-50 shot. So apparently the girls, like, are basically held as prisoner. And the boys get, like, kicked out all the time as teenagers. And apparently some of them end up in foster care. But anyway. Um, from 2007, it says that the FLDS has 8,000 members. And then 15,000 people are polygamists that are not affiliated. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I want a graph. I don't think we have a graph. No one's asking the real questions. They kick people out, but don't remove your records towards Exmo's count to their fastest growing religion. That's hilarious. They're like, with a funky record keeping. That's like the public school system analyzing test scores. When my mom tried to get her name off the Mormon membership list, it was a whole ordeal. They came to our house before they would do it. Yeah, I know you have to, like, submit a letter. They did that on Real Housewives of Salt Lake City where they had to submit, like, I don't want to be Mormon anymore. Um, so yeah, here's another example of fraud from them. And one example of the 2011 tax year, Alma T. Barlow told the IRS that $628,000 had been withheld from his paychecks. He asked for a refund of four twenty nine, dollars um, but he falsified business expenses to get those refunds. So just like a lot of tax fraud bullshit. So that to say, these people have money and they're doing it in fraud ways. Um, and then how the FLDS controls the economy on the Utah, Arizona. I'm not, I'm not getting this newspaper. Sorry. Sorry, Salt Lake Tribune. I'm sure you're great. Um, how the FLDS controls the economy on the Utah, Arizona line as told through an auto parts store. So this is from 2018. Um, he says that he lost all of its employees and most of its sales because, Oh, preferred owner Art Jeff has been banished about a year and a half earlier by the FLDS. So I guess they are like boycotting him. That's so sad for this man. But also, they'll have an auto parts store there. If they don't like you, I'm sorry. This just seems like a bad business idea. Um, <clears throat> so that is just like some local business intimidation. It's giving mafia. And then this is from 2022. Former cult member, former FLDS cult member says he was forced to work unpaid operating heavy machinery to build hotels across the United States as a teen. From the age of 14, he was operating heavy machinery around the country. He says companies with ties to the FLDS were contracted to work um, at build sites of major hotel chains. He was a part of the FLDS. Yes, church. Um, and it was years prior, blah, 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 blah. Just some like stuff that we probably already know. Jefferson said, working long days off the book, often unpaid, the children who were sent to work for these companies operated heavy machinery on construction sites around the 2010s. Multiple outlets have reported about accusations of the use of child labor by companies linked to the FLDS. It's like I said, they have a lot of legitimate businesses and they make the wives work at the businesses for free. The kids as well, it appears. In 2021, the FLDS was ordered to pay the Department of Labor to pay nearly $1 million for violating child labor labor laws. That's crazy that a church has to pay the Department of Labor. Like, I feel like at that point, when you have that many companies and employees, like, you're no longer a church. You're a corporation. Like, if you, if you as a church are having problems with the Department of Labor, you're not a church anymore, baby. If the Department of Labor is involved, God has left the building. Like, <laughs> that is crazy. I was kind of freaked out when I was 14 and they told me, go jump on this big piece of heavy equipment. I was pretty scared and I remember I didn't want to, but at that point I was like, this is so man. I've got to learn sometime. <laughs> so I just did it and overcame the fear. Jefferson says the kids worked at the sites of Residences, Holiday Inn, Marriott's. 
on other hotel chains, but he doubts the companies were aware of the child labor. Multiple requested for comments were not returned. Um, and Jefferson is not the only FLDS member to report having to work as a minor. Like we said, the Department of Labor got involved. This is him. Look at him. I don't think he's 18 in that picture. I think someone fucked up that caption. So now I want to watch some news reports about what's going on in the area. Hopefully you can hear. It looks like a hotel you'd see on the side of a highway. Long, featureless corridors, numbers on the doors, land decor. But for the many wives of notorious polygamist Warren Jeffs, this was home. This room was the prayer room. Jim Murray got an exclusive look inside the huge compound where Jeffs and his so-called sister wives lived. All 79 of them. That's right, 79. 79 is crazy. Wives. So your bedroom was on this main floor? Yes. Our guide was Brielle Decker, who was wife number 65. The 31-year-old says she was forced to marry Warren Jeffs when she was only 18. Coming back here is actually- I don't even know 75. Warren Jeffs' <laughs> rambling compound is located in Hilldale, Utah, headquarters See? of the radical polygamous group run by Jeffs. Today, the town is nowhere what it once was. Very few residents are left, and those who are here mainly stay to themselves in compounds with high walls and gates. The largest compound belonged to former church leader Jeffs. It is 28,000 square feet. It has 42 this is bedrooms insane. and two giant kitchens. It reminds uh, me of the Duggar kitchen, kind of. Do you see it? Like, it's not the Duggar kitchen, but it is the Duggar kitchen. Two giant kitchens. Behind the walls of this storage room is a secret chamber where sensitive documents related to the church were kept in a safe. There's I bet it was like the money stuff of all the fraud they were doing and to all of the child abuse. Sensitive documents. All right, inside edition. Just say the quiet part out loud. The commercial fridges and storage rooms are crazy. This is essentially a dormitory. There's even a hotel style workout room. So you would do everything in groups. Yes, like the whole day is scheduled. Hour, you have to be there. And if you're late, you do get punished. The wives were required to Why'd pray they make her do every that? hour. Why'd they make her sit down like that? Hands knees and holding hands. Talking was not permitted. On the chimney, it says pray and obey. Right. And that's a message you'd see every day. Warren Jeffs is currently serving pray life in obey. prison for sexually assaulting two teenage girls. Before he went off to prison, this is where he lived. Room 207. It was up to him to decide which of his 79 wives would spend the night with him. Disgusting. Yes. Trigger warning here. I told you it was like, well, it'll be discussed, but not super in-depth. Favorite wife. He did? Yes. One favorite wife? One favorite wife. And were other wives jealous of, of her? Oh, yeah. But she, um, she didn't have a choice. Right next to Jeff's door Yikes. was Brielle's. Perhaps it's fitting that Brielle is trying to buy. I was a surprised compound. he didn't have a better she hopes room to turn too. It into a tourist attraction, as well as a sanctuary for other former members of his church. Oh, we call it the Freedom Chateau now. <laughs> we call it the Freedom Chateau now. Is absolutely hilarious to me. She was kind of an icon for that. So this is a lot of people because the, they got caught doing fraud. And remember how the church like owned a lot of these buildings. A lot of families are getting evicted. And this is from um, 2017 when a lot of those articles we just read are from. You see, I'm really into this mix of just like reading the news and then we're going to look at the houses. I just want to like reiterate this woman probably has absolutely no education. So like, is that the perfect use of that word? No. What I will grant is she has been brainwashed, has not had access to education, and is experiencing a lot of hardship and having her home taken from her. So I'm going to, like, try and, like, be empathetic towards this woman. Sure. Because, remember, the court took control of the land trust, and now the people in control of it were the original people that put in. So a lot of those people's kids have left the church, so that is why Warren Jeff's from prison. He, like, preaches from prison. Like, these people follow him while he's in prison. Um, and it just like made him even like a stronger leader to them and like able to brainwash them more because he was like, see, they're all trying to take me away from you. You have to follow me even harder now. But anyway, um, that's why he's like, you can't trust the land people anymore. So he's basically just like completely isolating these. But it seems like the government is like attempting to at least make it reasonable and easy, but because these people are so brainwashed, they like are refusing to talk to them, look at anything, sign anything. Like they just won't even deal. 
are now coming up due again for three and four years. In the also, rear. these news reports keep saying teenage brides. I want it to be known that one of the children he was convicted of assaulting was 12. Um, and this report is June 2nd, 2017. And they're just not... Area was really controlled by these people. So what he's saying is, like, the police and the utilities and, like, all that stuff was controlled by the FLDS people in this area. But now the state governments have kind of taken over. So these people don't have as much power as they... Wait, just... All right, so moving on to where were we? Um, this is a Tucson news article. Big. The internet is unreadable. It's fine. Everything's fine. Let's try that again. There we go. All right. Oh, good. A million ads. Perfect. Big homes abandoned in polygamous sect town. This is from 2007, and this is from Hilldale as well. So some of these houses that they're referring to are some of the ones that we're going to look at. Um, do, 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 do. There's one that's 19 bedrooms, 23 bathrooms. Another property has eight bathrooms. It's at least a three-wife home. And they're just kind of talking about um, how a lot of these owe taxes on them. So they're just kind of abandoning them once the leader got put into prison. So that's why a lot of them ended up abandoned and are kind of like for sale now. So to Zillow we go. I told you, is this the case why Sister Wives moved so much? There's a lot of reasons why Sister Wives moved a lot. Not three bedroom, three wife. Exactly. Because you got to keep in mind, these people also have huge families with lots of kids. So you don't just need bedrooms for the wives. You need it for your millions of children. Um, so let's go ahead and do it. So the first couple are all in this area we were talking about. And then the later ones are in some other spots kind of surrounding it. So these first couple, I'm confident, are FLDS. And then the other ones are just like, this looks like a polygamist house. But I do not have proof. I guess I don't have proof for any of them. So starting off, and most of these were already sold. Starting off, this is 265 North Homestead Street, Colorado City. This was sold in 2021, so when some of those news stories were. This is 9,379 square feet, 15 bedrooms, and 10 bathrooms. Starting off from the front, this looks like a doctor's office. This looks like a suburban or a rural area doctor's office. It has a very threatening aura, especially with the balcony up top overlooking the parking lot. And I don't like that this residential house has a parking lot. It's not, um, mm, it got worse when we went inside. It got worse when we went inside. It is kind of giving funeral home dentist office. Um, the ugly facade should have left it with a brick wall. And this is mainly what I want tonight to be about because so many people have suffered so much in these homes and other homes and in the FLDS cult in general. And what I think is important to take away is despite the fact that these men essentially had unlimited access to money, they had all the money in the world, they somehow created the ugliest houses I've ever fucking seen. And they're large. These are not cheap. It's not like, I'm like, oh, their house is ugly and old and cheap. These were expensive and they look like this. You know what I'm saying? And that's really what I think we should focus on tonight. <laughs> so the split stair, not loving the gray carpet, the, the chandelier in combination with the fluorescent lighting, you're losing me there. The, the broken blinds, it looks like a cat has been on those blinds, or maybe a small child, perhaps. You can see the lines in the carpeting. That's what happens when you use child laborers. They do not have the best carpet seaming abilities that I have noticed. Um, the half-carpeted stairwell is so church group youth building vibes. Have they no good interior designers in the FLDS church? I really don't think so. It's giving an empty, ant empty antique score. And for those of you on TikTok, you have to come to Twitch to see the photos that we're looking at. Thank you so much. I don't like that this is like kind of giving kitchenette, but it has carpet. And then there's a ramp. But there's stairs. So I would be like, oh, there's a ramp. Do they need, like, accessibility? But then there's a staircase up that doesn't have a ramp directly right around from it. So I don't really think that's solving what issue. Ooh. Rough. Rough, rough, rough. Uh, looks like they 
built this for a different fridge than the fridge they currently have. And like I said, a lot of these were abandoned. So a lot of these, like that article mentioned, so these pictures are from when it was up for sale in 2021. I'm guessing it hadn't really been updated in a hot little minute. There's damage on the kitchen island. It looks like it's not actually damaged. The tiles came off. Well, that is damage, but I mean, like, it's not like mold or like uh, disintegrating that just needs to replace the tiles. I hate these cabinets really a lot. I haven't seen a single ceiling light that doesn't give me the heebie jeebies. Exactly. Uh, don't like, don't like, don't like, don't like, don't like. My childhood home had carpet in the kitchen. Oh my God. I will say this pantry is pretty bitchin'. Like it does need a good scrub down. Looks a little dirty, but I would like that pantry. I don't like this either. I'm not having a good time. I'm scared. I don't like that carpet on the walls. Why? What is, what is their obsession with carpet on the walls? And what is this room? Green carpet and a wood burning stove or a wood burning furnace, whatever the fuck that is. I feel like I'm in a one-star hotel. I feel like this house is like, you know, when you have a dream and the building is just wrong, like you have a dream and you're in a building and you're like, what was that building? Like that, it wasn't residential. It wasn't a business. Where the fuck was I? That's what this building looks like. Food storage. Look up Mormon food storage. Yes. They think that the end of the world is coming. So they store up on food again with bringing up sister wives. I'm sorry. Christine talked about that on Sister Wives because when she left Cody, he was like, well, what about your food storage? And she was like, you can have it. And she said that that was like really liberating for her because she felt like she was leaving a fear mindset behind and that like the polygamous faith that she was a part of was just so based in fear and she just felt good not having that fear. Wait, where do you see soundproofing? Carpet wall, carpet walls equals soundproofing. Oh no. I don't like that. I don't like that. What is this room? Is this a workshop or a torture room? I'm very unclear. Everything just looks so unfinished. That is a nice laundry room. I love a good, good sized laundry room. Everything just looks so unfinished and the rooms are just so weird. Like you can tell that they built this house cause like what is the sink in there? It's just so, so weird. My Mormon friend has the biggest pantry I've ever seen. I dated an LDS guy and the massive cans of food in his parents' house were crazy. See all of the above. Y'all know if you don't get married quick enough, certain type of Mormons will lock you in a room with other bachelors. That's terrifying. You know that thing on TikTok where it's like, would you rather be in the woods with a man or a bear? I feel like that, there's a joke somewhere in there. Like, would you rather... Like the Mormon room. Like, would you rather be locked in a room with a bear or with a room full of Mormon bachelors? Let's do a poll. 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 Would you rather be locked in a room with a bear? Room full of Mormon bachelors it won't let me put bachelors so i just put batch you get the point mormons are very into prepping for end times i saw a tiktok where someone that like was like oh the rapture's coming they had food storage in their house and then they left notes all in their house because they were like oh for the people that don't get raptured like i'm going to you can come in my house and like they'd have the directions of like how to get your water clean, what to do to stay warm, like survival directions, like all around their house, like in the cabinets with the food. And they were like, just so that anyone can come in after the rapture. And I was like, that's like so kind of you, but like so far removed from reality. Like, that's so nice of you to think of us, but like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> I feel like Mormons would use their prep supplies to take advantage of people. I was Mormon. I'll take the bear any day. I'm not that good of a host to in-person guests. The bear won. Who is voting man? Tell us right now. That is their choice. This is a democracy. Uh, cursed bathroom. The sinks in the room. What is it with the sinks in the room? Oh, I guess I know what it is because I bet a fuck ton of people have to share the bedrooms and the bathrooms 
So they like directions for the left mind. It's funny. So I bet the reason they have sinks in the bedrooms is because they have so many people that like the bathroom is reserved for like using the toilet and using the shower. You brush your teeth and you get ready with your bedroom sink. I bet that's what it is. Because like how they do that in college dorms sometimes. Like sometimes when you have like the hall bathroom, you have a sink in your room. Yeah. Like how elementary classrooms have sinks. I don't like the basement. I don't like it. I like, I'm trying to gather the layout of this house. This carpet looks clean, but somehow threatening. I'm trying to figure out what the layout of this is. And I just have no idea. It literally just looks like a bunch of big ass bedrooms with six in them to be able to have like six people in each room. Is that a painting of a window? It is. We won't let you outside, but please enjoy this lovely painting. Oh, what is that? Like a reading nook for kids? Uh, did they let them read? I don't think so. They can read scripture up there, I guess. I know, I need a blueprint of this. They got more duct tape on the carpet. Child laborers with their carpet skills. That, that carpet is very specifically threatening. I feel like, oh, I know why the carpet's fucked up. All of the carpet, I bet they buy the remnants, and a lot of times remnants are from hotels and office buildings from when they do construction, because they usually overorder in case shit gets fucked up. So that's why all the carpet is these weird colors, because that print, like, that is a hotel lobby, like a hotel hallway has that carpet. I'm confident. So I bet that's why they have that. Looks like old church sanctuary carpet. Another another good thing is that it's leftover from the church. Regardless, this is leftover carpet. This is not residential traditional carpet. Uh, these people have a little kitchenette in their room. I don't know if that's like a favorite person room or if this is like a rec room of sorts. Okay, balcony. The view is kind of viewing. I'm going to be honest. They don't deserve it, the, them being the men, but that view is viewing. Okay, backyard. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. It looks like casino carpet. Okay, it's a very threatening aura. I don't like it. Not at all. Do we don't have, this woman's just walking. The real estate photographer's feeling very lazy. Oh, they have barn. They have barn. Interesting. They have a little barn. They have a little barn. Yeah, it says it was sold for $6,000. I'm guessing this was maybe bought at auction because possibly it's like condemned or not up to code. I bet it's not up to code. Um, let's read it. Oh, it's on almost a full acre. Interesting. I'm not going to read all of that. Listed for sale. Oh, no, I don't know where that 6000 was from. Oh, it was sold $6,000 and then listed for sale later. I bet someone bought it at auction and then the listing was removed. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So that was one house. Where are we? Moving on to another house right around the corner. I don't know if it's right around the corner, but it's in the same city. This one is actually currently for sale. Um, 13 bedrooms, 9 bathrooms, 7,000 square feet on 0.7 acres. This is up for $699,000. I'm watching the stream and playing Animal Crossing. This is my version of heaven. If we all put in like $3, we could share it. So... We can tour it. Main home has 10 bedrooms, six bathrooms. Attached basement is three bed, two bath. So that's a lot. I like this one better. I will say like from the street, this just looks like a big ass house. Like this doesn't look as menacing as the other one does, but it's still a little odd. Let's get inside and see. Okay. Like they're this realtor is trying to make it give normal as much as she possibly can. Or he, they're like, we're going to put pumpkins. That's normal. A wreath. Normal. Little flowers with the American flag. Normal. What's an attached basement? Like it's right under the house. So I think that means that it has its own entrance and exit. Like it's physically a part of the same building, but it's like, it's like an apartment in the basement kind of is I think what that means. The scale is kind of weird. Um, is that a picture of the outside of it? What is this an aerial photo? What is that? I don't know. Okay. Not the worst thing I've seen in my life. The furniture could be better. Okay. The antlers. The antlers. The antlers. Antlers. 
No, detached means it's a separate physical building. So like a detached garage is like not connected to your house. I'm saying that the thing they're talking about, I think is a, it's the basement, but it has its own entrance and exit. And like, it's not like, it's like privacy, I think is what they mean. I bet Mormon house architects are insufferable. God, you're probably right. The leather, the leather and pleather recliners. Oh, oh no. It's the, it's the church furniture for me. It's the folding chairs and folding stools and plastic tablecloth for me. Yeah. Yikes. Okay. Not loving that. Not loving it. Cabinets could be worse, could be better. The red is a choice. The red is a quite intense choice, I feel. The food storage. Look at the buckets. <gasps> Look at their buckets. I want to know what this whiteboard says. Is it like chores? What is that? I love being nosy. I love being in people's. Oh my God. Please look at this room. Please look at it. Please look at this room. Please look at the room. I was going to use the couches as boomer core, but I can't excuse the folding chairs. Oh no. Okay. The bathroom's kind of normal. That's pretty normal. Oh, I don't like this one either. Home. Love. What's in that cabinet? What's in that chest? What's going on there? All right. Fuck it. Camo shower curtain and towels. Fuck it. Camo shower curtain. Why the hell not? Why the hell not? Oh, that is a craft room. Someone is getting their fucking crafts done in this bitch. Let me tell you that much. Look at those bins. Oh, someone's going off in here. Okay. Just in case, in case you were curious about the stair railings, we have an up close shot just in case that was a priority to you. Is this like a hallway? Okay. Bunk beds. Very traditional polygamist features. Bunk beds. I still same thing. Oh, I like the macrame. That's kind of cute. Maybe this is like a hipster. Why is there a fridge in the bathroom? Why is there a fridge in the bathroom? I'm really confused. Why is there a fridge in the bathroom? Mary making the pajamas. Stop. 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 They didn't want to put baseboards on? No. No, we're good. We don't need them. Don't need them. Baseboards are actually optional. I don't know if you knew that. I still want to know why there's a fridge in the bathroom. But it's huge. That's like a full-size mini fridge. Oh, breast milk. I bet you're right. I bet you're right. I bet it is for breast milk. That makes sense. Skincare fridge, but there's so many people that they need a big one. I think breast milk makes more sense than skincare, guys. I don't think the FLDS community is like doing the refrigerated skincare routine. I'm going to be really honest with you. I don't think that they are on that side of the internet. I don't think that they're doing that. I don't think they have ice rollers. I don't think that ice rollers have reached this part of our country just quite yet. Um, yeah, I bet it is for breast milk. That makes a lot more sense. <laughs> Unless it's Mary Kay. <laughs> they are very into their pyramid schemes. Kids realm, pretty normal. What was this? It won't let me zoom in on the picture. But look at that photo. Look at the parents in that photo. Do you guys see it? Do you guys see the photo on the dresser? It won't let me zoom in, which is annoying. Can I open the image in a new tab? And now can I zoom in? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Look at this photo. Look at this photograph. Do you see it? I'm scared. Pick me up. I'm scared. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Back to the room. Fuck it. Tractor themed bathroom. Oh, I do like that bedding. I think the cow bedding is cute. But why are there four beds in one room? How many kids y'all got? A lot of kids going on. A lot of kids. A lot of kids and not much privacy. That is, that's a laundry room. I will say that much. Like, a good laundry room eats. All of their furniture and tile just looks so office. Like, that is an industrial bench. Like, that's like what they have at a public park. I seriously hope they do fire drills. I think so, too. Oh my God. I was watching Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and there's an episode where 
Lisa Rinna's husband, Harry Hamlin, makes them do a fire drill. And tell me why my boyfriend was like, we should do that. That's a great idea. <laughs> I was like, I love, like, your eye on safety. That's amazing. I love that so much. Um, is that a camo piano seat cover? Why would you even need that? Is this another kitchen? I feel like, did we see a kitchen from this one? Okay, a lot of desk. A lot of homeschooling going on, it appears. Let's look at some of these book titles. <laughs> what do you do for a living? Oh, I go on Twitch and zoom into book titles in polygamous tomes. Draw. Seeing lots of draw. Kind of hard to read these. These all match. Yeah, it's too blurry. We can't see. We can't see it. We can't see it. It's all office liquidation stuff. Exactly. It really is. This is the downstairs kitchen. I looked at this house this morning. <laughs> yeah, because the other kitchen had the folding chairs. Look at the tiny desk. They bought this from like a school, I'm convinced. This is the baby room for the baby. More bunk beds. Very bunk bed heavy household we have going on here. I have that vacuum in blue. It's so office core. This kind of looks like art. This looks like a social commentary piece, I feel. No, it really does just keep going. There's so many. Another laundry room. Yeah, I would see where a polygamist family would create a lot of laundry. Oh, you're right. That's the downstairs kitchen because it's the, the little, the basement thing. Yep, it's all coming together. All my houses were blending together, but now they're back. They also have an RV in the back because apparently they don't have enough bedrooms in this very large garage situation. Um, So one thing I'm wondering... And I'm speaking on this from experience. So I'm noticing that the RV is parked not underneath the shade. So this is what I think might have happened because this is what happened when I was a kid to my grandparents' neighbors. They built a big-ass garage specifically to put their RV in. But the way they measured it, like they measured for the RV to fit in there, but they didn't account for the garage door. So it didn't actually fit in there because a garage door takes up a good 18 inches and they didn't have that much room that they factored in. So I'm wondering if a similar mistake was made here with this awning where maybe the high number, they're like, oh, it has to be at least this many feet tall. And they did that on the high part and they didn't account for the slope. You should make a Jacob Reese style book about polygamous homes. I think I should. Um, and then this is the house, I think, right there. Yeah, because, oh, they have a basketball court. That's kind of nice. I love a basketball court. Forgot about fuzzy toilet seat covers. Oh my God, we have a layout, finally. Huge haul, yeah, it's really what we thought. Just a shit ton of bedrooms, multiple laundry rooms. Interesting. Moving on to our next one, 575 North Cloven Street, Colorado City, Arizona. These are all in that same little area. This one is also for sale. This one is 10 bedrooms, 11 bathrooms, $880,000. Um, shitty FLDS architects can't even do math right. They're 12 and they've never been to school. Give them a break. They're trying their best. No one taught them the Pythagorean theorem. They're trying their best. Obviously, the child laborers fucked it up. They're child laborers. Um, this is a family residence on over an acre and it is near a bunch of stuff, making it a standout choice for both families and investors. That is the Mormon community. It is, or that's the FLDS. Let me stop speaking on Mormons. I know that upsets y'all. Um, it is family and it is also a capitalistic endeavor of investment of exploiting said family. Possibly you. This one appears to be upgraded. I think this is a flip. This is screaming flip to me. I think someone bought this at auction and flipped it, which this would, like if I had like Oprah money and I would could just like get a bunch of foster kids and live in like a giant former polygamist house and just like live that way, like that would be cool if I had Oprah money. You know what I mean? I hate how TikTok makes me like verify that I'm alive so that they know I'm not sleeping because people were TikToking and sleeping. Like I wasn't being weird. Why are you punishing me? So our amenities cater to a variety of different lifestyles. Oh, it is literally right across from this 
sporting thing. What I will say is this area is beautiful. Like the United States is actually beautiful nature wise. This is such a flip house. Like with the cheap materials, with the black trim and the wood, this is such a flip. With the white tiles, with the all black fixtures, this is such a flip house. It's not even funny. The laminate flooring. I don't know what this little side cabinet moment is. Oh, I guess you would put a kitchen table there and then it's a bench. I actually really fucking love that. If you have like a really big family or if you're just like starting a commune, that is a really good setup. I like that as a lot. Do they have a German schmear fireplace too? Not that we've seen so far. I'd be surprised if that made it into the flip. LOL, when people would just stream all night. Yeah, this is such a flip. Like, look at the, the light fixtures and the cabinet fixtures. They didn't even redo these cabinets because if you look at, like, the lines of the cabinets, that's really giving, like, FLDS remnants. But then they, it looks like they just sanded them down, painted them white, and put these fixtures on them to try and make it look modern. This is such a typical millennial flip house. They didn't do the basement or whatever room this is. That is a huge laundry room. That's kind of baller. This slip would be so much better with a foam beam on the ceiling. <laughs> the pot lights. See what I mean? They didn't even flip the whole thing. It looks like they just did like the minimum to make it even moderately appealing. And they left the shitty green carpet and the cabinets everywhere else. Ah, uh, more wall carpeting. They really did the bare minimum with this flip and want to make $880,000 off it. Remember we saw that other one sold for cheap as fuck. The bench, see, I think that's the table over there that you would move here, and then there's the bench for the other side. Interesting. The carpet is a crime. The layouts of these is so odd. I do really like those big windows, though. Like, the office cabinetry in a bathroom, it's just very jarring to look at. These couches are huge. This one is definitely the best one that we've seen. Even though this is kind of giving, like, youth room at a church with the ceiling like that, this is definitely far superior than the other ones we looked at. The millennial flip bathroom. Like, you can't have the FLDS youth group ass living room and then put in the millennial all black fixtures and just act like that's normal. That's, you can't do that. That's not allowed. Love grows here. Does it? Did we take a vote on that? More wall carpeting, more cabinetry, this weird built in desk to this bedroom for this. This looks like a timeout corner. What the fuck is this? More of the sinks and the desk in the bedroom. That appears to be a very common fixture. Second kitchen, I believe. Second kitchen that they also did a half-ass flip on. Um, more ugly carpeting. It's really, it's all coming together. This is such an interesting flip. And then the, the carpet and then the sink and the room, they all look like they were really built by the same people because they probably were. They're all built by the same like polygamist architects that are 14. It's, like, such an interesting contrast with, like, the millennialness and then, like, the, like, weird FLDL, FLDS-ness. The front yard has decent landscaping. I'll give them that much. That's kind of cute. This one is definitely the best one we've looked at so far, and that is a decent-sized piece of land. Oh, interesting. It looks like... So that's the front that has that kind of cool sidewalk tree-looking thing, and then they have, like, a side yard and a basketball court... Yeah, this is definitely giving, like, polygamist house. Look at the layout. That's huge. You guys, do we want to take a tour? I think we should take a tour. So, it was sold also in 2021 for $275,000, and then someone just listed it for sale. This is absolutely a flip. That's absolutely what happened. Um, so the next ones are from other areas, but they are just kind of giving polygamist homes, so I just wanted to look at them anyway. Oh, no. Oh, there it goes. This is 762 Kona Court, Placerville, California. Um, but this one is not... So that, okay, I remember what I did. I put this one here for the address. They took the photos down after it sold, but they never took down the Matterport. And a Matterport is like these little 3D dollhouse image things. So the realty company still had this in Matterport. <laughs> I was digging deep for this, but the Mountain View always eats. So these people, apparently this went viral and then they took it down. So we're just going to kind of walk around. I wish I could show you photos because that's kind of easier and less tedious, but look at the food storage. Um, 
more of these giant cabinets. What's back here? I didn't do this in advance. I like poked around a little bit, but not really. Oh, this is their giant laundry room. Again, with the office-y industrial doors. The cabinet style makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, because it, it seems like, like it looks like, like a school or like a government office in like 2004. Again, with these little stove things, or not stove, heater, whatever they are. More built-in cabinets. They have a Harry Potter room. What's over here? Did we already go here? I don't think we did. What's down here? Oh my God, I didn't even explore this. Okay, a bathroom. There's a basement. I like don't even know where to go. I'm so overwhelmed. Okay, pretty small bedroom, but huge. Oh, it's oh, it's the same bathroom. I understand. I understand. Let's go in here. What's this? Oh, weird. Weird, 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 weird. Don't like, don't like. You already had a huge pantry. Why do you have another one with windows and these weird stairs? Don't like. No, thank you. No, thank you. Oh, this room, I didn't even notice. Oh, I think this is the living room and it has like a window. Oh. Oh, okay. So this is connected. Oh, okay. Interesting, interesting. We can also see like the dollhouse version of this, which is like the layout, but it's kind of weird to look at. View floor plan. See? Okay. That is a little bit better of a view. So you can kind of see the layout of floor one. Let's move to floor two. Interesting. We'll go back to walking around. Oh, now we're upstairs. I want to go downstairs. I want to go downstairs. Cool. We'll just be down here, I guess. Oh, weird. Weird. Oh my God. I hate when things come up on the screen in TikTok. Like, thank you. But it's always like, I always feel like I've been hacked. Lots of scales. I feel like all of them have scales. Are they like an almond mom community? I want to go back to walking around. Oh, we're outside. We outside. Oh, they have a really interesting garage. And this is in California. Where is Placerville, California? I don't even know. Placerville, California. Carriage house. Um, it is, oh, it's like way outside of Sacramento, like halfway between Sacramento and the Nevada border is where Placerville is. I'll show you. See, Placerville's right there, like between Sacramento and Reno. Um... I want to go, I think I got lost. Okay, now I know where I am. I want to go upstairs. I wanted to guide myself upstairs. I didn't want to just be teleported upstairs. Is this multifamily? The propane tanks are throwing me off. I don't know what this is. It's kind of giving polygamist and that's why it went viral, but we have no proof. Cannot confirm nor deny, but like based on what we saw in the other ones that are like definitely polygamist because they're literally in that town. Huge closet. I feel like this one is too, just based on the building materials alone storage bed more bathroom yeah this is a large house how many bedrooms and bathrooms is it it's three bed five bath but i think because legally a lot of these can't be counted as bedrooms and a lot of them are huge because i feel like we have already seen more than three rooms that would be used as a bedroom and then they have these weird like office rooms but yeah this apparently went viral online and that's why they took the listing photos down but the realtors forgot to take down the matterport they have this dance studio inside this is kind of having cursed energy. Interesting. So this is the video I found about it. Let me make sound. Beyond. It's in a pretty remote location. This $1 million compound in Northern California has gone viral on Zillow. It's in a pretty remote location in the mountains. Really not much for miles around. And one of the strangest interiors I've ever seen. You ready to take a tour with me? The door. When you go inside, there's a spacious living room, a bathroom off the kitchen, an enormous pantry, and tons of storage in this kitchen. I feel like you could feed dozens, if not hundreds of people in here. Although I've never seen a cooktop built into the marble like this. It's creepy. There's one bedroom downstairs with a large closet. And here's where it starts getting a little weird. I can't make it full screen while I stream because it ends the stream because it like takes over my whole computer and then my camera's like, bye. Weird. I guess you could call this a library with lots of built-ins, another one of these green ladders to help you reach, and then even more storage up here. 
This whole side has locked cabinets. Okay, now we're reaching a weird part of the house. The listing says this is a 2,000 square foot space that the owners call affectionately the room. What the fuck? What on earth is this for? Why do you need this much storage? The rest of the house is pretty odd too. If you go upstairs, there's a little ballet studio, gigantic closets, all the some storage. Kind of office space. There is one bedroom up here with, again, tons of storage. Down the hall, there's even more closet space. Isn't this insane? No one seems to be able to figure out why. So yeah, I felt like the Zillow Tastrophe on TikTok did a better job with the Matterport than I did. But that one is crazy. Even though it's like, we don't know if it's polygamist, it kind of gave some polygamist hints to me. So I just wanted to show that. And then here is another one. This person, I don't know why I did it this way. So this one, um, someone posted on Zillow and said, why so many beds on it? It says there's only four bed, three bath, but I remember looking through this one and it was weird. So one, the furniture is mad weird. Let me find what I think was on here that I was looking for. That's not an excessive amount of beds. Where did it go? Here, let me do it where you can like scroll through all of them instead of clicking one by one. Oh, this is it. So like you saw, it's kind of like Western vibes, but then look at when you get to this basement, all of these are beds. Like these are curtains and they open up to be beds. There's so many beds in the basement. Do you see that? I feel like, why do you have all of these little weird beds in the basement? Are they putting the wives in the cupboards? And then there's this other kind of like walled off room in the basement. And then they have this huge barn. I just felt like the, the basement bed corners were very, very odd and they were kind of freaking me out. So I wanted to bring that one in here. And then um, oh yeah, that's just the Zillow link that we just shared on. So here is another one. This is actually realtor.com, not Zillow. This is currently up for sale. This is in Ohio. Is that Ohio? Um, $690,000, seven bedrooms, four bathrooms. So let's get into it. This one is a really kind of giving compound. Look at how much space they have. They're so far away from anything. It's like a sorority or fraternity sleeping porch. Exactly. So starting off super horrifying is this dining room kitchen. If you even want to call it that, like the amount of open space is giving me just an incredibly uncomfortable vibe the way it literally looks like stables and then like that's a pretty normal room but then like the tile in the bathroom and more with the storage like it just kind of looks like a horror movie to me when you look at it it's like okay it's just really I feel like the house is staring at me and I'm staring back at it like if I walked into this room, I would need to immediately leave. Like the table, the walls, the beams, like the tile, the kitchen cabinets, the whole thing just makes me so, so, so uncomfortable. And then like the weird, like old, like dive bar stools with like the family kitchen table that's like not big enough for the space. And then there's that weird, is that a piano over there? Like the whole thing is just so weird. And I don't know what the storage thing is i don't know if it's all food storage or if it's other storage as well and then more with the mismatch carpet this one oh my god the blue room this feels like a punishment the lights from outside view actually made it scary not inviting exactly like normally lights make it less scary but it made it more scary for some reason i thought a bug was crawling on me but it's my blanket shawl thing um these rooms are like relatively normal, but they're very large. Like, so that's why some of these that they don't have a huge number of bedrooms in them. It's because I feel like they're putting like 10 people in one room. Like, yeah, this is technically one bedroom. But like, why is it like that? Maybe the secret underwear takes up more space than we realize. So that's what I mean. Like, I think this house said it was like four bedrooms, but like, look at the size of that bedroom. That's not a normal bedroom. I don't like it. Don't like. And then like the carpet has ripples in it because it was installed by children. The basement is weird. Why do they have this weird countertop in the basement? It's like an empty summer camp cabin. Yeah, it's like huge. And then this like half finished room. I also I tried to find evidence of this, but I really couldn't find much. But I remember seeing it in a documentary one time that 
one of their strategies to get out of taxes is to not finish their houses. Like, they'll build a house, but they'll, like, not paint it and not put drywall on the inside because then legally it's not a house, so you don't have to pay as much in property taxes because the evaluation's not as high. You're just paying taxes on the land rather than the house. But I couldn't find anywhere online. Your frequent reminders that these were designed and built by children are so important. Someone earlier in the chat was talking about how the U.S. like refuses to sign the children's rights thing, which... The U.S. hates our children. It's, like, actually so gross of us. They also, like, the house is a barn, but also it's two barns. They have a pond. Good for them. So when you run away, there's somewhere that you can wash the scent off of yourself. And then I'm wondering what the layout is between them. Oh, a gazebo. Like, it looks like a public park out here. Like, what is this? It's really odd. Should I put in for more information? I don't know if this part on the left is a garage or if it's more rooms or both. Maybe it's like rooms with a garage over top. What's the bedroom bathroom? Seven bed, four bath. And we saw the fucking size of those bedrooms. So I was wrong. It wasn't four. I was thinking of bathrooms. That was the four. Sorry, I keep burping. This looks like a haunted historical monument. It really does. This is another real estate website, Trulia. It always wants me to log in with my email. This is, uh, nope, don't want to schedule a tour. How do I make the tour go away? Uh, eight bedrooms, seven bathrooms, 1.7 million. And this is in Utah. This one is a very cursed. Look at it. Look how weird it is. Look how weird it is. It looks like a hotel. And the huge garages, like those garages are meant for RVs. That's what my grandparents' neighbors wishes they, they had. This also kind of screams Mary Cosby to me. Like the fountain and like the driveway and stuff. I don't know. It doesn't look like her house, but it's kind of giving her house to me. The back literally looks like a motel. That looks like a motel. Oh my God. The carpet on carpet. This is so weird. And then the spiral staircase that cannot be safe for children. I guess kids designed it. They wouldn't know. This looks like the Sims 100 baby challenge house. The mismatch and random carpeting is so weird. Oh my God, the floating stools. Look at the floating stools. That's making me so uncomfortable. I hope they have a more picture. Oh my God, there it is. A more close up picture. Oh, I hate the floating stools. I absolutely hate the floating stools. I really need the chat to catch up with me and discuss the floating stools. The rest of this seems slightly more normal than some of the others that we've seen. Olive Garden alert. <laughs> they should have turned off the ceiling fans. It's giving soda fountain. The 12 year olds opted for the spiral staircase so they can push each other down for fun. The floating stools remind me of old school McDonald's. I see that. See, this person has like normal art on the wall. So maybe it's like a normal family. I don't know. Like a Zendaya poster is not in a fundamentalist Mormon house. So I don't think that this was at this time a fundamentalist Mormon house. I don't like that the mattress is on the floor and there's a door to outside and a bedroom. It's a little odd to me. Um, this is a lot. Oh, that looks like a torture room. More with the office cabinetry. Some personality. What? Okay. I'm a little confused. There's the table with a very wrinkled tablecloth, a single mason jar candle and a chair at it. This real estate agent is trying their best. The ceiling is not nearly high enough here. I feel like that's very close to the ceiling. And I'm a little confused about this door. This is a second story entrance. I'm really confused about this. What's happening with this entrance? What is, what's going on with that? Interesting. ASAP, always say a prayer. Just kill me now. Just kill me now. Separating the wives? Maybe. Is that a balcony where the pillars are? Is it? Let me look at the outside again. I need to see the outside. So this is the outside. Okay. So. I need to try and figure this out. This is going to bother me. So I think. This is maybe, what is that going to? I need this open in two windows. We're really, so if this is the outside, 
I think this door might be going to this other part of the house. I think this door is leading. Okay, so I think this door leads to this one. Let, well, let me zoom in more, but it leads to this walkway. That's what I think the situation is here. Glad we could figure that out. Um, one chair. I think if you're a real estate agent and the furniture's weird, it's better to just take it all out. You know what I'm saying? No, it's not the front door because this is the top of the spiral stairs. The front door is down there. I'm talking about the door on the far right, I think goes to the other walkway balcony. Like it's better to just have empty rooms than this like weird mashup of furniture awkwardness. Who's living in this house? Who is living in this house? And then this bedroom has two beds in it. Like we didn't have a million other empty rooms. Same thing here. Oh no, that's just a different angle. And like the chair and the desk, this is so odd. The frozen um, shower curtain with the jug of product, whatever that is. And then three bedrooms in one room when we had those huge other rooms. I'm just very confused. Then this laundry room is like the weirdest layout ever. Like that clearly doesn't fit there. You have this huge basement with one singular twin bed in it. And then, okay, a singular twin bed and then auditorium seats. That's not a great look for y'all's community. I'm going to be honest with you. Very, very odd. Scary basement. Get me out of here. More weird storage. The fake window scenes are coming back. And then this one has a bed in it. I don't like it. This is like very weird. And like I'm getting a very cursed aura from this home. We might have to leave this house. I don't like it. Is that a stroller? Why is there? Why is there? Why? Why? Why is there the weirdest bowling alley I've seen in my entire life? Why is there the cheapest, most like rinky dink bowling alley I have quite literally ever seen in my entire life? The ceiling tiles, like it's really giving nothing. My boyfriend would love the bowling alley. The gym that also has an exterior door. There's so many exterior doors in this house. Normally they lock people in. That's kind of surprising. The movie theater with mismatched seating. It's so bad. And they want $1.7 million for this in Utah. Utah. In Draper, Utah. Okay. It's three minutes from the Ikea in Salt Lake. I will have to drive by on my next Ikea run. Report back to us, because this is crazy. The, like, box spring? This has such a cursed energy. And then, like, that's a restaurant table. More exterior doors with exterior locks on them. Yeah, I think that door is over there, and this is, like, a big porch area. They have, like, old playground equipment that's very obviously from, like, a school... This back balcony is odd. And see, then there's that door. See what I'm saying? It was like, it went up to the balcony part, but I think I thought it was on the other side. It's so cursed. I really don't like it. And they have like, whatever's going on there. It appears to be some agriculture-esque projects. It backs up to a train track. I'm sure that's marvelous. I cannot believe that the listing price for this is $1.7 million. That is literally insane. Oh, they have an in-ground trampoline. That's cool. Damn. They kind of went off with that one. The RV parking. Like, it is, this is, like, a, just such a estate. And look, I think there's the Ikea you were talking about. Oh, no, that says eBay, I think. So odd. It's really quite cursed. I don't like it. That's why it's $1.7 million. I know you like that trampoline. <laughs> The 1.7 million valuation came from the in-ground trampoline specifically. And the gazebos. The mountain view, though, like, this is quite literally gorgeous. Like, the house is not, but, like, the nature really is absolutely gorgeous. I will grant them that. I wouldn't want to be right next to that train track, though. That would be really loud. Imagine being their neighbor, literally. I'd be like, God. God help us all. God help us all. There's a piece of lint flying in here. 
Let's do a couple more. I don't think we're going to do all of these. Um, so McMansion Hell Polygamy Edition. And then this is the Zillow listing for that. So I found that one from Reddit. Maybe this will be our last one. This is a really wild one. This is in Hilldale, Utah. So this is in that little area. I meant to put this up earlier with them. But this is in that little FLDS area that we were talking about at the beginning. 19 bedrooms, 13 bathrooms, 11,000 square feet, $849,000. Um, and this is for sale right now. What's special? Storage rooms. Storage rooms. Is Mike doing okay? I feel like he's kind of crunched up. Mike is literally fine. He's right there. He's doing his thing, chilling out. He's good. He's just leaning. Um, so it looks like a church starting off strong. This does not look like a residential address. 120 listing photos is crazy. It's 19 beds and 13 baths. They have a lot to say. They have like a basketball court. This looks like like planters. There's a lot going on. Storage. Gotta have that storage when you got this many people. Got that nice little carpet patch in the middle. Love that for us. Industrial kitchen. It's giving Duggar kitchen industrial fridges. This is quite the estate. Wow. That is like literally a restaurant sink. All right. Storage. We love storage. I get it's matching the desert, but that house didn't have to be the color of earwax. So they said industrial kitchen, but it seems like the kitchen is in multiple rooms. I think the whole house is an industrial kitchen at this point. I also, you're right. Let's go back to the fireplace. This awkward gap under the fireplace is very interesting. Like that just feels like it's begging for a child to smack their head onto it. Um, but again, it was probably built by kids, so they don't really think those things through. So industrial kitchen, what's not the kitchen? Every room is the kitchen, if you ask me. I do like the little window pop-out things. I wish that window went down a little lower, though. More laundry. One thing about polygamist. Oh, wait, I missed the exit sign. Not the commercial exit signs. Not the commercial exit signs. That is crazy. They're having fire drills in here. They're doing the fire drills, I trust. Again, with like just the sink and cabinet in every bedroom randomly. And the same thing, it's, they all have such similar carpet. What the fuck is outside that window? Is this a basement? What is this? And then why is the, why is the wall tile and the ground is carpet? I don't like that. I don't like that at all. The lighting really is horrific. And then more of these little like stoop fireplace things without a fireplace. What is this room? What are any of these rooms? And like, what are these things on the ceiling? Like, it just looks so industrial. I think they might have bought like an old building and turned it into something. This whole thing is just very odd to me. And the lighting and the wood, is that like a prayer kneel spot? Like all these little random bump outs and things just seem like tripping hazards. Another one in there. Like, what are these little platforms for? I'm so confused. I want to get to the storage rooms. That's why I'm kind of moving quick because all these rooms look really the same and weird. All right. Apple tree or not apple tree mural, but just a tree mural. I thought that was an apple, but it's actually like the fire alarm because this house is basically a office building. More sinks in the bedrooms. I guess that one at least has a bathroom in it. I feel like these could be made into cute senior homes. We should repurpose them into like for homeless people. Because it's like a lot of bedrooms and industrial kitchens. You know what I mean? It's the tree that Eve ate from. That's what I assumed as it was a biblical reference that I was not picking up on. Um, more exit signs. Got to make sure we can evacuate this place in the event of a fire and or federal takeover. Uh, all these are very similar. Very beige. Very, very beige. Don't love that chandelier. I don't know what this little like atrium is for. That's a little odd interesting do you like throw people off that when they're misbehaving what is this this is nice that's a lot of natural light and they have a really nice view that's a nice room i wonder whose room that is the favorite that shower looks like a torture chamber why is it drywall on that side it should be like glass or something normal that shower is weird i can't even put my finger on it but it's weird and wrong more cabinets one thing about the polygamists they love a cabinet more storage more cabinets, all those cabinets. 
Oh, this is like the overlooking the circle window to outside. Let me open the front so you can see it again. So this circle window up here, that's what room this is. Was this the room with the weird shower? No, I can't tell. More cabinets. Gotta love them cabinets, baby. I mean, I love the vibe, but I don't think suburban Utah has a lot of homeless people. Yeah, I don't think so either. I, I, I'm fairly confident in that. The interior designer popped off with that window. <laughs> the back of this also, like, is really giving, like, it looks like a rehab. Like, it looks like a hotel, but, like, a longer stay one, you know? The whole thing is very cursed. God. Dirt. Rocks. Oh, they have some grass. These people don't seem like they have as much land as some of the other ones do. The other ones seemed more land heavy and this seems more house heavy. Compound but vertical. I don't like that gazebo. I feel like some weddings were performed here and I don't like it. Don't like that one bit. I don't know why those rocks are up there. Ugh. Let's do, I know I said that was going to be the last one, but let's do this other one that's also in Hilldale, Utah. This will be our last one for real this time because it's also in that same town. This one is very similar vibes to the last one. It was also sold um, in 2021, but let's see if we have a price on that. Uh, it was sold in 2022 for $200,000. This says it is 38 bedrooms and 41 bathrooms and 40,000 square feet. So this is a perfect one to end our night on because this is a house of horrors. It is a literally a compound that looks exactly like a huge church, dorm, something like that. 40,000 square feet is absolutely insane. So starting off strong with the house waiting room that looks literally like a waiting room of like a therapist office or something. Um, office with a huge gun safe. Awesome. Really feeling incredible vibes so far from the hostile waiting room to the large gun safe. It's really just been straight up from us walking in. This is a rec room, presumably for the men only. I'm assuming women do not get to have fun. Probably still listed as a single family home. Let me open it again in a new tab and see. Is it listed as a single family home? I feel like I just saw that somewhere. I don't know. Maybe. Anyway, back to the photos. The Okay. All right. Large, large dining room with furniture that is very obviously restaurant surplus. Uh, I will say their water game does appear to be on lock. I would like to have that cold water dispenser in my kitchen. That is pretty nice. Who sits on these ottomans? I'm wondering. Oh, it has a couch. The cabinets. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That is a whole ass church congregation room. Look at the fluorescent lighting and they have the same chandeliers that some of the other houses we've looked at have. And I think another house had the same carpet in it. That is a stage. So I think a lot of these people, like I said, were using the same child laborers and like using the same materials from these random surpluses. That is insane. This kitchen is insane. That's huge. This one, it is ugly, but it seems like it's in really good condition. Like a lot of the other ones we've looked at, you can tell like they need to be cleaned and taken care of. This one looks like it's in pristine condition, which is probably not a good sign, I would say. It means people were there recently. The fluorescent lighting. This is like literally an industrial kitchen. The carpet gives me the heebie-jeebies too. This little like courtyard area. They have a hot tub. That's not very FLDS of them to have a hot tub. I don't like that. Use coupon code FLDS for BOGO on fluorescent lighting. I want that kitchen specifically for my Thanksgiving, which Numnut is responsible for the kitchen ceiling and lighting. Yeah, but you got to get in in your dress. They have a golf cart. At least they have a lot of space. More bedroom sinks. That appears to be a staple of the FLDS community. More fridges. Interesting. Very barren bedrooms. Like, it really looks like a hotel. Wait, is this the compound that was in that video earlier that was, like, the compound? Because didn't they say it was 38 beds? Is this it? Is that what we're looking at right now? Let me Google this address. Let me do some, some Googling real quick. 
Y'all, this was only listed for two million. We should buy it and live in it if it wasn't cursed. Compound address. Nine six six. It looks like he had a couple compounds, but I don't see this address coming up on it. Let me just look up the address and see what comes up. <clears throat> okay. It used to be called Zion Suites of Hilldale. Oh my God. So this is what it is now. It's a guest house in Hilldale. So I guess it was this like polygamous thing and someone bought it and turned it into like a B&B. &B. So that's why they all have like this hotel kind of a vibe, but it used to be something else it appears commercially zoned so now it is commercially zoned which makes sense because they have all the industrial kitchen and stuff could be converted into assisted living or rehabilitation and it was sold in 2021 and it looks like now it's like a bed and breakfast i'm a construction project manager maybe if we sage and renovate we could make it girly pop so that makes sense that someone bought this like thing and turned it into a hotel that is so interesting it's such a cursed energy though i wouldn't want to stay there that makes sense because a lot. I was noticing all the bathrooms had these things that are like legally required for ADA and stuff. But yeah, I guess it's just like a giant Airbnb, but like the most cursed Airbnb of all time. Let's read the reviews. Why not? Awful. Don't believe false five stars. Not only is this place in a town where the half the homes are unfurnished, but we get there and waited 30 minutes for someone to return to their lobby. There was a note that said if they weren't there to call their local cell phone. When the lady finally did get back, we learned that they didn't have the rooms we reserved. We reserved two rooms for one night. They had one room for one night and two rooms for the next night, which we weren't staying the next night. I then asked where's your reservation system? And she's just looking at a piece of paper with some names written on them. They didn't even have a computer or any real system. We finally just decide to bunk in one room as there's no other place with rooms. So we all get to the room. I'm looking in the hall for an ice machine. Well, there's a tiny ice maker sitting on a shelf that has broken lid and is filled with water. I open it up to pull the ice out and the bottom is disgusting. But honestly, like, what'd you expect? Like, you're staying at the Zion Suites of Hilldale. Like, you didn't, it's not going to be the Marriott. I tell the girl who was nice, they're only saving grace, and she says, oh, I'll get it out, because there was an ant in the water, so I'm thinking she'll clean it. Um, the ant was gone, but she didn't even clean it. That's hilarious. They had shampoo, but no hand or bath soap. This was October 2020. Terrible service, no communication. Former compound of Warren Jeff. This compound is not your run-of-the-mill hotel. Rooms are sparsely furnished with an intercom system hidden behind the TVs. We believe they were monitoring us. <gasps> Stayed one night too long. Never saw hotel staff but the couple that checked us in. They wanted to initially charge us $180 for a room that was advertised online for $80. Took the $80 and directed us to two dirty rooms before finding us one clean in this crazy maze of a building left the room once the following morning for breakfast that did not exist when we got to our destination i found that my jewelry and makeup was missing very creepy and shady place this is crazy this is why i kind of liked this random topic because i knew we would discover things lovely and different great staff like condo, weirdest place I've ever stayed. There's no hotel sign. I followed Google Maps during a, down a dirt road and came to a 10 foot high brick wall enclosed compound residence. So strange. We already had paid online, so I figured we had to we had to figure out what was going on. It turns out this was a polygamist home. We stayed in what appeared to be a teenager's bedroom. It's an experience. It did have its own bathroom and was clean and a comfortable bed, but I was very uncomfortable and creeped out. Even though you don't have your own AC, there's central air through the home and we had an overhead fan. Maybe if this had been on Airbnb, I would not have expected a hotel. This place is very acceptable as an Airbnb, as a unique Airbnb. One hour drive um, from Zion National Park. So I guess that because they're within like a national park area. That's kind of their draw. Not very well maintained. This is crazy. I want to look at more of the photos of it. Like imagine you check into a hotel and it's this. I would lose my mind. What a perfect thing for us to end on, like the giant compound. So I don't know if this was actually Warren Jeffs, but Warren Jeffs was in this area and it kind of sounds like it was about the right size, but it sounds like there's a couple different compounds like this. So I don't know if this exact one was his. 
but now it is a hotel. I wonder who owns it. I want to look more into this. Zion Suites of Hilldale. Who owns this? Let's read the Google reviews. Do they have a website? Owner. Owner? I do not see. I see a different nearby place that seems relatively normal, but I don't see who the owner is. Let's read some Google reviews. Zion Suites of Hilldale. Uh, restaurant, bathroom, breakfast, cleanliness, property, service. I lived in St. George for 31 years. Blah, 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 blah. My daughter told me about Zion Hills Estates for three seventy five. dollars So this guy lives there. David lives there. Real. Came on a quick trip to Southern Utah. Fell in love with this place. Our expectations were modest. We paid $80. The right price should have been $50. A lot of these were some of the ones we read on um, TripAdvisor. Seems like very mixed reviews. This compound is not a part of... We read this one about the TVs. This is crazy that they just turned it into a hotel. You need to see it to appreciate it. And then the parking spots. There's not that many parking spots. But yeah, this is... Oh, there's more back there. This is like a cursed building. Some bad shit happened here. But that's wild. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. What a perfect ending place with the most chaotic thing I've ever seen in my entire life. So thank you so much for being here. I really liked this topic. Feel free to go to the link in my link tree or scan the QR code up here to suggest some topics. Um, I'm very open to things. Also, I only have like three and a half weeks of school left, so I'm excited to do more deep dives once it's summer and I have a little bit more free time. This is always the highlight of my week. Um, it's so fun to be on here and just yap, yap, yapping with you guys. Thank you for being here. I'm here every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Those of you on YouTube, thank you for being here. I hope one day you want to come join us on Twitch. I know it's a little intimidating, but don't be scared. Um, have a great night, everybody. Uh, make good choices and don't go stay at a hotel that was made out of former polygamous compound buildings. Love you so much.